Alrighty, it's uh, two days later now from when we uh, laid this up. It's nice and hard, so I'm going to basically go around with the uh, spatula here. And I can only go up to this. I can't go beyond this. So I'm just going to sort of loosen it up. And the reason I can't go beyond that is because that's where our base is. And I'm hoping we can try and release the uh, part off the base. Now this mold was not made thick. It's a very uh, thin mold. It's probably only two, two and a half millimeters in uh, thickness. All right, this isn't probably going to work, but I'm going to just try and give it a little air and see what happens. Nah, nothing. <laughs> so I guess we'll just try and uh, pull this thing off. And uh, we're going to have to try and get this part out somehow. So we'll just go around the perimeter here. Now, there's no way this fragile plug is going to come out of this mold without being destroyed. It's just not going to happen. Then do something a bit dodgy here. And we'll try and get a little bit of pry here. So there's our mold there. So what I'm going to do is get a, a bit of credit card blank here. And I'm just going to go around this perimeter free up anything what might be tight and hopefully we can maybe get this out in one piece but again i doubt it it's so thin all right i think i've got it all around so the only thing i can think of here is to uh just try pulling it up very gently. I'll work on the uh, piece that I filled here. Oh, maybe we'll get this thing out. I don't know. Normally with a, a plane or a big part, like a wing or something, uh, it usually just pops right off, but that's because of the plug is uh pretty robust as opposed to this thing here it'd be nice to see if we can get it out just for shits and grins seems like it's locking up a bit there looks like we got a pretty decent mold i know it doesn't look like it but once i clean all this up it should be good So we'll get to that. Okay, guys, uh, this is what we've got. The uh, mold has come out. It's uh, reasonably thick. Actually, let's uh, zoom out a bit. Okay. Mold's come out. It's reasonably thick. Uh, plenty good for this uh, small part. Uh, so what I found out and what was grabbing is this uh, indent here which is the opening for, uh, I guess, the air intake scoop. Uh, there's a little ridge in what's going on on the back side of this. So that's kind of uh, locking it up there. So I think I'm going to have to run a Dremel very, very carefully around this just to get a chamfer on it. And I suspect I've probably got the same thing here where the uh, motor would go. Uh, other than that, there's a little nick here which needs to be just shaved off. Uh, the mounting screw indents have come out good. Uh, the other thing is, is when the manufacturer made that part, they didn't cut around the perimeter very well. And uh, I could not risk going over it. Uh, so... What I'm thinking of doing is I'll lightly sand all around this outer edge here and maybe put some filler so it's nice and smooth. That will then give a really nice flat base to go onto the actual plane because I'm sure it's got an indentation for where it sort of fits over like a glove. 
So I think that's what we'll do, and then we'll try and polish up the mold because right there I can feel a big, well, not a big, but you know, half a millimeter ridge, and that's going to lock up the part coming out along with this and probably around there. Unfortunately, oh, well, you know what? I can use my uh, endoscope for troubleshooting my car and take a good look at that. So anyhow, I'll uh, get to that and start cleaning it all up. So I'm going to uh, try and uh, get a bit of a, this lip off. All right, so what I've done now is I've gone around the perimeters of all of this. I've got a bit of a chamfer, being very careful with the Dremel. Uh, I've wet sanded as best I can. I can't get too aggressive because I'll end up scratching all the side. And then that's a whole other kettle of fish. I've gone around uh, the entire perimeter where this uh, ridge is. And uh, I'm going to tape it up and then uh, get some filler. And I just use surfacing putty for the most part because it's nice and hard and it's easy to sand. So I'll just flatten this ridge out and then uh, sand it. She should be good, ready to pull apart and we'll see. Now, at this stage in the game, one could make a decision and say, all right, the original plug was really crappy. So what I could do at this point, I could actually lay up a nice heavy uh, few layers of glass in here. I could make another plug and this time reset it down. But what I would do is if this was mine, I would, I would actually make another plug. I believe I did that on the A6 gear doors. Um, then I would actually add screws, rivets panel lines, any detail which is scaled to this. Because it's no big deal. Once, If you're going to make a mold, you might as well detail it so that every part comes out nicely detailed. But in this case, I'm not. I'm just going to uh, clean this up as best I can, then we'll lay one up and see how it looks. Okay, the next step I did was to uh, just mask, oh, about half an inch below where I'm going to do the fill line. Uh, Experience tells me that if you don't mask, you're guaranteed that some of this um, filler is just going to fall into cracks and it's going to be a pain in the ass to get out and you'll probably scratch your mold. So uh, always mask. All right, at this stage, I've uh, you can see this uh, filler. It's all uh, in that uh, gap what was in there, that big groove. Uh, I've sanded it with some 220, some uh, 800. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the tape and polish a bit more into the mold with some thousand. And uh, that should uh, get us to the point where we can lay up. Okay, I don't know whether you can see it that great on the uh, camera. But uh, this has been uh, taken up to 2000 grit now, wet sanded all through this ridge in area. It feels pretty good. Probably not perfect by a long stretch, but you know what? It's good enough for what we're doing. So what I'm going to do now is three coats of wax and then uh, throw some PVA on it and then some primer and we'll let it sit overnight and lay it up tomorrow. All right, so the mold's all uh, polished. It's got three coats on. So all we have to do now is fill our little pressure hole where the uh, valve is. Just want to make sure that is filled. Oops, I think I hit the camera. And now we'll uh, spray some PVA on there. PVA has been uh, applied. Uh, I do that by uh, misting a very, very light mist coat first. Give it five minutes, in this temperature at least. And then I can proceed and give it a fairly uh, heavier coat. So the tape's in. I usually mask on my molds the uh, parting line here, or the cutting line, shoulder, <laughs> whatever it want to call it. 
Uh, in this case, uh, I'm not because it's going to be a very low volume mold uh, and I can just always scrape the paint off later if I have to because there is PVA underneath it. So I'm going to leave that now just to cure overnight, especially for this first pull. We don't know how the mold is going to react. So I'll get that covered so dust doesn't get in it and then uh, tomorrow we'll hit it with some uh, stuff.